Hey everybody, welcome back to a new edition of the Bet Like No One's Watching podcast. I'm your host, John Sullivan. You may know me for, as Buffalo66, or you may know me from my Twitter page, Buffalo Hold'em, or some of the other podcasts I'm involved with. Uh, thanks for listening today. Uh, got a, a perfect time of year. Uh, right after Labor Day weekend, we've uh, got the second half of the CFL in full swing, and we've got week one of the NFL upon us. Uh, so we got a lot to talk about. I try to keep these 15 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get right into it. Start by talking about CFL. Uh, I actually I made three plays this last week, and I went one and two this week in CFL, and that was my first losing week in uh, quite a while. Uh, I, I've done really well this year. Um, and to be honest, I, I had some tough beats, but looking back on it, I mean, I can't really complain. Um Thursday night, last Thursday, I took Ottawa uh, as a two and a half point favorite, and they uh, struggled but carried the water. Uh, I took uh, Saskatchewan on the money line as a home dog, and uh, they failed to win outright, although they did cover. Uh, their kicker missed some field goals and missed an extra point with less than two minutes left that would have put them ahead. Uh, it was a frustrating game to watch, but they did come back from from an early thirteen nothing deficit. So uh, they were very competitive. I just uh, it was a value play that didn't pan out. And the uh, Labor Day game of the Argonauts getting ten and a half at Hamilton, and they had a thirty to seventeen lead in the third quarter, and they ended up losing forty nine to thirty six. They threw a pick six late in the game. And then uh, they turned the ball over on downs uh, after challenge, not challenging a very uh, a catch that uh, uh, should have been challenged. Um, and uh, Hamilton kicked a field goal in the last minute to cover. So that's how it goes. Uh, overall, I believe that makes me. I don't have the sheet in front of me, but I believe that makes me thirteen seven and one on the year in CFL. Profitable, no doubt. Um, Will I be a 67% better the whole year? I, I don't know. But the four-year sample size is well over 60%. I don't know if that's sustainable or not, but uh, I keep trying, and uh, we'll keep digging and see how well we do. If you're more interested in me talking about CFL and uh, uh, the reasoning behind my picks uh, or you want to play CFL DFS, check out my Daily Fantasy CFL podcast. Um through Fear the Beard Media, and I also post it on my YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube channel is called Buffalo Hold'em, and uh, I have all the CFL goodness that you want in those podcasts, so check that out soon. So now let's move on to the NFL, and the good news is we have it starting this Thursday with a rematch of the Super Bowl, Carolina-Denver. And we this year... We have not only NFL sports betting, but uh, I have uh, daily fantasy sports back in New York State. And after all of the recent press surrounding DFS, and more specifically my involvement with the ESPN story and my little NPR piece, I decided I'm going to conduct a little daily fantasy NFL experiment. So I logged into FanDuel today and... I was looking at the lobby, and uh, I decided on somewhat of a whim that I'm going to play four different Daily Fantasy Pros at small stakes to dip my toe back in the water and see, see where the state of the game is. So I took four head-to-head contests against uh, Drew Dinkmeyer, who's the uh, head honcho at Daily Roto. He's the owner of Daily Roto. I took a game against Dan Back, who blocked me on Twitter. Excuse me, and he's, quote-unquote, the voice of the industry at over at Roto Grinders. I took one against Peter Jennings, also known as CSU Ram 88 uh, who is the, one of the head guys at Fantasy Labs. He's also a DraftKings analyst and a former ESPN contributor. And he's a guy that asked me to do a syndicate with him in 2012. But he's uh, gone on to bigger and better things. And then I also decided to play Condia, 
who actually doesn't work for a DFS company. He's just filthy rich with excellent abs. I'm very jealous of your abs, Kanye. Um, but he is a DFS pro. So before I talk a little bit more about that, I thought it was interesting to note that I did not see any games from Beer Makers Fan or Kaiser Roll 13, uh, two OG daily fantasy players like myself. I guess they've uh, just made enough to retire by now. Now, uh, I'm really surprised I didn't see any Beer Makers contest because he's a FanDuel spokesmodel, so to speak. He gets paid by FanDuel to say how great they are, and so... Him not playing on there uh, really has has a question mark in my head. I think Kaiser Roll, he got sued at one point, and I think FanDuel paid his legal fees in that case. I'm not sure if they made some kind of settlement or something, but I'm kind of not that surprised he's not there. So back to my, uh, my little experiment with the four games I took. I'm playing Thursday Starts with no late swap. So I'm playing on FanDuel. If you don't know what that means, it means you can't, once the Thursday game starts, your rosters are locked. You can't change any players. Now, uh, there's a reason for doing that. I'll explain in a second. Uh, but I'm going to share each contest on my Twitter page, a screenshot, so you can see my lineup versus uh, all my opponent's lineups. And then I'll, I'll also post screenshots when they're over. So I'm basically looking for two answers in this experiment uh, going uh, on in week one, and it'll determine how much DFS I'm going to play this year. Question number one is, how similar are their lineups? I've got four pros lineups who apparently uh, all work for different companies, so there should be no collusion between any four of these guys. So how similar are they going to turn out? Uh, it, it will be interesting to see this because uh, uh, if they use similar methodology, they may all have uh, similar uh, core players in their lineups. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how it will go. And question number two I want to, an answer to is, do I have any skills left in Daily Fantasy? Uh, this is my 10th year of playing Daily Fantasy Sports. And... Uh, you, it's hard to judge on one week. You can have a bad, um, you know, a bad week. I had the, uh, I played a Thursday fan duel, and Adrian Peterson was suspended on a Friday for a Sunday game, and that came out of nowhere. Uh, and obviously, I lost everything. But uh, you know, assuming that uh, I have. Uh, uh, still enough knowledge. At least I, I know I have enough knowledge to make smart sports bets. So I'm hoping I still have enough knowledge to to make good DFS lineups. Uh, uh, I just you know looking at this um, uh, from the head to head perspective, uh, I, I kind of ignored the GPPs, uh, which are the large tournaments. I think the GPPs are just too big to enter anymore, unless you have one of those monster bankrolls like Condia, who's a you know, a billionaire or whatever, uh, to, you know, if you can enter two thousand twenty five hundred dollar entry fees, you're only going to play 10 or 20 guys. It's pretty easy to be competitive if you have enough bankroll to enter those. Um, so, you know, if you don't, you're better off playing head to head or small group, uh, five man, 10 man type things. Um, so it should be interesting to see if I can win any of these contests at all. Uh, I think the no late swap and starting on Thursday eliminates the technology element somewhat. I think that, uh, um, you know, uh, with the late swap, you have people that can uh, uh, adjust their lineups and their exposures. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, these pros are playing tons of head-to-heads, and they want 30% of this player and 50% of that player, and that's going to change as more information comes out. So this eliminates that quite a bit. Um, so we'll see if I have any any uh, any luck this week. And next podcast, I might just uh, break down how I went about constructing my roster and uh, how it appears they constructed their roster. So we'll see. Uh, I will post that on my Twitter, and you can all check it out. So now that my contests are set, uh, I want to talk uh, the rest of this podcast about uh, Week One NFL betting. And uh, one nice thing about the NFL instead of the CFL is that it is a liquid market. And that means 
not having to wait for limits to increase in order to place your wager. Now, I'm not a big better. I bet, you know, a few hundred on a side or a total. Uh, but for me to bet CFL over like $250, I have to wait usually till at least game day, you know, and maybe six hours before a game starts to get get the the limit I want, you know, and my number that I, I liked the best might be gone. So that, that makes me pass on some wagers. The NFL, you don't have to worry about that. You get the line you want, uh, you're out ahead of it. You, uh, you can put your money down, you know, unless you're uh, one of those whales. There's several games I like this week, uh, but I've actually already placed two wagers for Sunday, and I'm going to tell you uh, what those two wagers are right here. We have the Cleveland, excuse me, I'm taking the Cleveland Browns plus four at minus 105 versus uh, at the Philadelphia Eagles. And I'm also taking the New York Giants uh, pick them or money line at minus 102 at the Dallas Cowboys. Excuse me. So some of you sharper guys out there, you hear those two bets and you may already know why I placed those wagers. Uh, for those of you that uh, wonder why, well, I'll tell you, uh, I'm betting against uh, two quarterbacks making their very first start in the NFL. Now, I have no, I'm not a big trend better, and I have no numbers to say, oh, quarterbacks making their first start in the league are this and this against the spread or whatever. But just looking at things uh, pretty objectively, or as objectively as I can, uh, you look at the Eagles, and it seems that they've kind of resigned themselves to be a rebuilding team this year. Uh, they have their quarterback, Carson Wentz, starting with uh, uh, injured ribs. And uh, the Browns have an experienced quarterback in RG3. Uh, probably, the you know, it's the best quarterback they've had in a while. I'm not saying that RG3 is a top 10 quarterback, but uh, we all know he used to have explosiveness before he hurt his knee. Uh, but I like them to cover in this spot at plus four. That's a, a really attractive line to me. And uh, I, I like that bet right there. So that's my play number one. Play number two, the Giants at the Cowboys. All you hear in the media is Cowboys this, Cowboys that, Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Ezekiel Elliott. Um, Giants could be in a little bit of disarray with a new coach. They are supposed to go for a, a more up-tempo offense this year. But at a pick em against a team starting uh, with a quarterback and a running back starting their first ever NFL game at full speed against the first string, I just like that bet. I I'm sorry. I, I I just I have to take that. Um, if you didn't, if you took out the names of the teams. Uh, there's so much public money that's going to come on the Cowboys. I, uh, but we'll see if the sharp money moves this line and makes the Giants a uh, a worse number on Sunday. We'll see. But I, I think it's pretty much even money right there. Um, that's uh, a play that's very attractive to me. Uh, so, you know, preseason doesn't really mean much to me for versus regular season results. Uh, same scenario with a game that I passed on is Trevor Simeon starting on Thursday night for the Denver Broncos. It's his first NFL start. The issue here is they're the defending champions. They have an amazing defense, and they're at home. I really find it hard to fade them uh, in that situation. Uh, I, I don't have a strong opinion on that game right now. Also, the Titans uh, at home versus a Vikings team that's in disarray with the Teddy Bridgewater injury. Uh, we'll see where that line goes, but I kind of like the Titans to win that game. Stan, Sam Bradford coming in with like a week to prepare. Uh, you know, Adrian Peterson is a is a good good back, but uh, we'll see. They you know they changed uh, Vikings just released John Sullivan, their center. I like that name, and uh, uh, I'm worried about their offensive line. So, um, you know, we'll see where that line ends up. I, I may make a play on that now. Last year, uh, if you followed my bets last year, I was a big fan of the NFL alternate, alternate lines. And as I record this today, they haven't come out yet. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what I usually look for 
is a team that's getting plus three or, or, or somewhere in that range that that I like a lot. Uh, they'll usually put an alternate line of them at minus three or minus three and a half, you know, at like plus 275 or plus 300. Uh, I look for games like that where I think a dog can win outright, and, and usually if they can win by three, you know, you can uh, kind of do a half and half wager, you know, half wager for them to cover and a half for them to win outright. Uh, don't know who until I can see the number, so uh, keep posted. Uh, keep posted in my Twitter feed for that. So, uh, like I said, my plays and my betting records always found on my Twitter page. So as a final tidbit, I'm running a little bit over here, but. Uh, I decided to uh, talk about a future bet that uh, I don't bet futures, but I know people do. And if they're looking for something to bet on for the NFL season, the one I like the best, again, not an official play for me, but if you're looking for a dark horse Super Bowl contender, I like the Redskins at 50 to 1. Now, I hate Dan Snyder as an owner, but this team should cruise to a division title. Uh, with the disarray of the other teams. They'll probably only need two playoff wins to make it to the Super Bowl. So 50-1, to 1, if they stay healthy, that that's a, a pretty uh, attractive wager there. I think they're like 22 to or 25-1 to 1 to, just to win the NFC. Um, check it out. If you're into futures, that might be worth looking into. So uh, that's it. Uh, we'll tune in next time. Let's we'll review what happened. Uh, thanks for listening. And as always, until next time, bet like no one's watching. Take care. Bye.